Hello everybody, welcome to Totally Tabled. My name is Shaggy and today I am very excited because I'm going to be doing a full solo playthrough of Kanban. I'm going to be using the deluxe reprint called Kanban EV featuring the gorgeous art by Ian O'Toole. And this re-release of the game included a new solo mode designed by David Turtsy, who I guess designs all solo modes now. And that's what we're going to be playing today. This is easily the most complicated game that I've featured on the channel, but this game is one of my favorites. In fact, go watch my top 10 heavy games of all time. You'll see it there. Now you set up the game as if you were playing a three player game. So we're gonna be using the three player side of the test track. But for the solo mode, there's quite a few differences. You're gonna to wanna to just select one of each of the performance goals, choose those randomly, then just put a single speech token on them. For the certification tokens, just do one in each department at random. And again, place a single speech token on them. In the solo mode, we're going up against two opponents, actually, two colleagues. David Turtsy, using this white meeple, and Vital Lacerda, using this black meeple. They don't require player boards or anything like that. They just need a little space for playing cards and collecting a few things throughout the game. You're going to want to go to the central stack of designs and select four of those at random and place them in a shared stack between the colleagues. You want to place their training tokens on all the training tracks, but place Lacerda's token on the second space. He gets a little head start in all of the training. You also want to make sure you grab their certification markers. You then take the two solo decks, shuffle them, and place them nearby. You're going to get two Kanban cards as normal, but take four of the meeting cards instead of three. You start with a speech token and a parts voucher. And to finish setup of your board, take the car part that is missing from the logistics department and add it to your board, and then take the top design off of the central design stack. And now we're ready to begin, but before we do, I wanna go over a couple of things. Because I know those of you who have not played this game, your eyes are going cross-eyed looking at this board. This is one of the most intimidating boards, I think, in all of board gaming. I remember my first time looking at the old board and at this new board and just it the feeling is overwhelming. So the first thing I want to do is take a little tour of the board and try to get everyone on the same page here before we start actually playing. I want you to ignore everything on this board except for that central yellow line, that strip going top to bottom. This is where most of the game takes place because this is a worker placement game where you have one worker and you're moving it back and forth along this strip to these different worker placement spots. There are 10 spots and they're paired up into five groups, each one a different department in this car factory that we work at. So at the top, you see two worker placement spots or workstations that go to the R&D department. The one at the top lets you do two shifts. Shifts are like actions or action points. And the bottom workstation lets you do three shifts. And these are gonna be resolved from top to bottom. So in that top spot, you're doing less shifts, but you get to act first. And that can be a big deal. The next two workstations are for the assembly department. The next two are for the logistics department. The next two are for the design department. And the final two are for administration. The administration department lets you activate one of the other departments. Each of these departments has their own training track. We'll be able to spin shifts to move down the training track. And when we move from the gray section to the white section, we become certified in that department. Being certified will let us unlock certain abilities and score points. I think a lot of people are confused about the theme here. Kanban isn't about manufacturing and selling cars. This is a game about office politics. Sandra is going to be moving down these worker placement spots, essentially evaluating our progress in these departments. She's a very demanding boss, and so she's going to potentially take away points from us if we don't meet her standards. And in the solo game, it's even worse because our two colleagues are going to be constantly trying to undermine us. They're not just going to be getting in our way, but every time they score points, we actually lose points instead. If at the end of one of the scoring phases, we have zero or negative points, we instantly lose the game. We are fired on the spot. 
this is a survival game. This is a game about trying to keep your job, trying to advance your career in the face of a ruthless boss and terrible co-workers. Okay, I think that's enough. At this point, we can just dive right in. So what are we trying to do in Kanban? What's our goal? Well, to oversimplify it as much as possible, we are trying to get tested designs. So what is that? Well, we want to come here to this design department and pick up these designs. We have five different styles of cars, which are denoted by these different colors. And we have six different parts to those cars, which are over here. So let's see if I can do this. We have the engine, the autopilot, battery, drivetrain, body, and electronics. And so each of these designs sort of relates to a style of car and a particular part. And we actually start with a design. So we got the green, that's sort of like the compact car, and the engine. So this is a design for the engine of that particular type of car. Well, what we want to do is we want to improve that design. And the way we do that is by going to the logistics department grabbing the part that relates to the design and then going up to R&D, spending that part, in this case it would be an engine, in order to upgrade the design, which we'll then put over here. We'll get some points, and that's only halfway there. We then want to go over to the assembly, push out the appropriate style of car, in this case a green car, it will come out, it will go onto the test track, we'll then go back to R&D and acquire that car into our garage. Once we've done that, this will become a tested design and we'll score points for that. So that's sort of the main thing that we're trying to do. Now I made that sound a lot more simple than it really is. But in general, we're just trying to get cars into our garage that match our designs. And we also want the parts that will allow us to upgrade those designs. Again, all of that will make a whole lot more sense once we get started. Now, the very first thing that we get to do is decide which one of these four spots here on the certification track, you know, where we want to start. I believe I want to start right here on this spot, which is going to get me a parts voucher. We start with one, and so now I have a second one, and these can be turned in to collect any of the six different parts. They're like a wild part. So I could use one of these to get the engine that I need. After that, Lacerda always wants to go into this first position here. David Turtsy always wants to go into third position. Now, if I had been in the first position, Lacerda would have gone to the second, or if I had been in the third position, Turtsy would have gone to the fourth. And this sets turn order from right to left. This is known as certification track order. So right now, Lacerda's first in turn order, I'm second, and Tertzi's in third. We now want to go in that order to determine where we're, which department we're going to start in. So what we need to do is put three of these large cards in a row. Just like that. Then we're going to take these smaller cards, we're going to draw one for Lacerda, and that determines whether he's going to take the topmost card or the bottom one. And here you can see the arrow. It shows he's going to take the topmost one. And this shows which department Lacerda is going to go into. He's going to go into the logistics department. And Lacerda always wants to take the bottommost workstation in that department. That's denoted right there. Tertzi always wants to go to the top one. Lacerda always wants to go to the bottom one. In fact, he'll only go there. So it's free, so he can go right there. Now, we're second in certification track order, so now we get to place in a spot. I want to go to the design department because I see a couple of designs here that I'm interested in. Now the question is, do I want to go to the bottom or the top workstation? And looking over at the cards over there, it doesn't look like Tertzi can is going to go to the department. So I can go ahead and safely go to the bottom one, get a couple more actions. And now let's see where David Tertzi is going. It says here he's taking the topmost card. That's R&D. And again, he's always going to go to the top workstation. Sandra always starts the game at her desk, and she's not going to really do anything in the first day. Okay, there we go. So now we're all set up. And what we do is we go from top to bottom resolving the actions. We always go from 
the top and go to the bottom. So we're not resolving in, in turn order, we're resolving in workstation order. The first thing that the colleagues do is they advance one space on the training track. They then do the action specific to that department. So Tertsi's in research and development, R&D, and it shows you on the card what they do. Now, they do things differently than, than we do them, and in fact, Tertsi and Lacerda don't always do the same thing. They have slightly different ways that they interact with each department. It's all here on the card. It can be hard to translate. So what this says is that they are going to upgrade a design, and they start with this stack of designs that they share that they can upgrade. So they're just going to take the topmost design and upgrade it. They take the part from the supply. They don't actually have to have the part. And they're going to go through the design process, which involves putting this part onto one of these spots of the car. So in this case, this is a design for the red model car. And they always want to take the points first. So they're going to put this part right here and cover up those. They don't actually get the benefit. They just are covering it up. We then just sort of flip this over, put it in their area, and then whatever part that they used moves up on this track. So since that was a body, the body moves up, the colleague scores however many points that is shown there in the space that the token moves. So in that case, two points. And again, remember, whenever they score points, we just lose points. So we just lost two points because of that. So that's what that symbology is showing. Now down here it shows that if there was a car on the test track, they would take that car. There isn't a car there, so it's too early uh, to take a car, but that's it, that's their turn. We lay their token down to show that they've done their action, they're now resting. And then we just come down and we see that uh, Vital Lacerda is next. Again, first thing they always do is advance on the training track. That can be easy to overlook that, and I probably will at some point in this game. I'm trying really hard. And then we look at the card, and it shows exactly what they're going to do. And they're going to fill up this warehouse with some parts. And the way they do that is they grab a Kanban card from just the top of the deck. Every Kanban card has one part that is doubled up. So in this case, it's the batteries. There's two batteries on that card. So you want to orient the card so that it's facing the warehouse. So in this case, we're going to orient it like that. Now there's this line running down the middle, and you're either going to slide the card up so that there are four parts in the top and two at the bottom, or two at the top and four at the bottom. And you're going to decide which way to do that based on where Sandra is. Because Sandra is down here, in one of these lower two departments, she's in administration right now where she starts the game. You can see here that means that there's going to be four parts in the bottom. So we're basically going to orient the card just like it is right here. We then fill the spaces, but only if the part is in the right hemisphere. So for instance, the blue engine is below that line, but the warehouse is above. And so we're not going to fill in a blue part. If we had oriented it that way, we would have put a blue engine part because it would have been in this top area. But in that case, we would not have put the pink drivetrain because the warehouse is in the south. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. So in this case, in this orientation, we're going to have two batteries, one electronics part, and one drivetrain. That card then just goes back to the bottom of the deck. Now, Lacerda's going to take all of the parts from one of those warehouses. And the part he's going to take is based on the lower card that he drew. So in this case, Autopilot. He takes all of the parts from that space, even if there were more. He'll throw the rest away and just keep one of them. Between the two of them, they can have at most six parts. And there we go. That is Lacerda's complete turn. Okay, now it's our turn to act, and we have three shifts because we are in the lower workstation. We can basically do two things. We can spend a shift to train, just like in any other department, or we can spend a shift to take designs from one of these eight spaces. Right now, we don't have access to these three that are in the stacks. Once we become certified, 
then we will have access to these up here. I definitely want to take a bunch of designs, and I see a few that are interesting to me. I think the first one I want is this guy right here. This is also for an engine, but in the black model car. So we take that and we add it to our board down here. We can see here we have spots for four designs. And then once we become certified in the department, we can remove this lock and we get a fifth spot. But right now we can only hold four designs. And because we took from this column, we actually get a banked shift. So what you want to do is you don't get it right away. So what you do is you use this token to show that, yeah, at the end of the turn, we're going to get accumulate a bank shift. Bank shifts can be spent to do extra actions on your turn. So right now we have zero bank shifts, but at the end of our turn, we'll gain one. Now, if we were to take this other design, we could get another bank shift for the future. But I think what I want is for our second action to take this. This is also for the uh, the black car, but it's for the batteries. And look, we started the game with a battery part. So we have that right there. And because we took from this column, we'll actually get one of these books. Now again, we don't get it right away. We get it at the end of our turn. So we'll just put it off to the side for now. These books can be spent to train in a department without using a shift. So it's like you're getting a free training, very valuable. Now, how do we want to spend our last shift? We could move up on the training track, or I think I want to actually grab another design for the green car. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab this one. Now it's way over here in this column. We don't get any special reward for that. So there we go. That's all of our shifts. We're done. We can collect our book and we can collect our banked shift. And once you're done, all of these slide to the right. You refill the top from this stack and the bottom from that stack. Now we keep going. Now it's Sandra's turn. For the first day, she's just in her office doing paperwork. So she just lays down. She doesn't do anything today. And there we go. That's the end of a day. So here's what we do. We slide the remaining card up to the top. If it showed a part at the bottom of the card, kind of like these two do, then we would check the recycling center and see if we exchange some things. I'll, you'll see that in action here coming up. But for right now, we don't have to worry about that. And now we just add two more cards to the line. The cards that are here, we can now discard. And now here's the most brilliant part of this game. We now go back to the top of this column and players wake up and move to a new department. So David Turtsey now wakes up, draw a little card, shows that he wants the bottom most card. It's gonna go to administration. Once again, he always takes the top workstation. Okay, now we go to the next person lying down. The sir is going to take the top card. Okay, so he's going to go to the assembly. Now we wake up and we get to decide where we want to go. The rule is we cannot stay in the same department. We have to move out of that department to a different department. And obviously, like any other worker placement game, you can't go to the same workstation that someone's already there. If I wanted to go to administration, I would have to go to the second one. I think I want to go to R&D so that I can immediately upgrade these designs, like right away. Now, here's the problem. When Sandra wakes up, she's going to go to the first workstation that she can find. If I go into that bottom workstation, Sandra's going to go to the top one and she's going to get to act before me. And that's going to be a very bad thing, as you'll see here in a second. So I'm actually going to go to the top workstation. I want to be able to do my work in R&D before Sandra gets to do her stuff. So now Sandra wakes up and she's going to hop in there right behind me. We now again start from the top and we take our actions from top to bottom. And this dance of 
taking actions and then waking up and moving to a new department, that dance is going to continue throughout the entire game. And there's so much interesting timing and strategy related to that. Uh, it's the heart of the game and it's, and it's genius. It's brilliant. Now let's quickly look over the four meeting cards that I was dealt. Because you can see right here, one of these shows green cars in my garage. So these goals here, you can see there's four of them laid out here. These are giving us little goals that we want to shoot for to get points when we have a meeting. And you'll see that coming up here. But this is giving us a little bit of direction for where we want to go. So I definitely want to get some green cars in my garage. And I have some upgrades here for green cars. This is giving us a little bit of indication that we want to go after green. So let's do it. Let's upgrade this green design. Now in order to do that, we would need the uh, autopilot system. We don't have that, but we can turn in this voucher. And there we go, now we have that. So because this is for the green car, we're gonna come over here and we're gonna put it in one of these spaces here. There's six spaces and we'll get the reward. And these top ones are for bank shifts, which would be really good. Right here is one of these books. That would be very useful, but I just can't, I can't deny the four points. So I'm going to go straight for the four points. Points are very important in this game. <laughs> now, because we use the autopilot system, we increase that up the track. And then we flip this. And you can see right here, it shows two points. So every time you upgrade a design, you also get two points. There we go. So we just made six points doing that. That was fantastic. And that was just one shift. Let's do it again. With our second shift, let's upgrade this other green design. For this one, we need an engine. Once again, let's just trade in our voucher. I'm going for points again. I just, I can't deny these points. And we get two more. Now, I'm out of shifts, but I do have this one bank shift, and I think I'm going to spend it right now to do a third action. Now, the only rule here is that you can never do more than four shifts on a turn. So if I had had two bank shifts, I could have used both of them to do two additional actions, but you're always capped out at four total shifts. I think let's go ahead and upgrade this design here because we have the battery part that we need. Now this one's gonna be for the black car, which is right here. And there's no points there. It looks like there's only two rewards. We could either get a bank shift or a book. Hmm, I think I'm gonna go for the bank shift. Two more points. And we would put this here to indicate that we're going to get a bank shift at the end of our turn. But it is now the end of our turn. We've used three shifts. We don't have any more bank shifts to use. Now, we could use this book to increase our training in this department. But I'm going to hold on to this book for now. We'll just take our bank shift and our turn is over. Okay, now it's Sandra's turn. When Sandra takes an action... She's going to do two things. She's going to evaluate our progress in the department. To do that, she's going to look at the training track and see who's furthest behind. We are actually furthest behind on that training track. So she's going to evaluate us. And for each department, there's a different evaluation. For the R&D department, she wants to see whether or not we have three or more upgraded designs. If we do, then we're fine. We don't get judged. But if we have less than three upgraded designs, she would then punish us and we would lose points. Well, guess what? We just got three upgraded designs. So she evaluates us. She's like, you're not training in this department. What's wrong with you? What kind of work have you done? She looks at our three upgraded designs and says, hey, you're doing fantastic work. Good job. I am not going to punish you. If we had had fewer than three, we would have lost a point. And we would have lost additional points based on our bank shifts. Basically, we would have lost a point for every bank shift we had less than five. So in this case, we would have lost four additional points or five points in total. 
So luckily, she's happy. Then she takes a little minor action in that department. In this case, she just moves the pace car forward one space. And that's it. That's her turn. Every round, she's going to keep moving from department to department and checking these training tracks and judging us, which is why it's so important to start moving up these training tracks, which we haven't done yet. <laughs> We're still in last place in all of them. So we need to be careful. You can lose a lot of points from being harshly judged, but you can avoid a lot of that if you bank a bunch of shifts or if you can move up those training tracks uh, fast enough so that you're not the furthest one behind. Okay. Lacerda's next. Okay, so the assembly department can get a little complicated, so I'm going to try to walk through this. If it's still confusing, don't worry. We're going to see it many times, and you'll be able to pick up on it eventually. Now, we're trying to move these cars down this assembly, out, and onto the test track. Well, which car does he want to move? Well, it's based on where Sandra is. And right now, since Sandra's in the topmost department, he wants to move the topmost car in that line or the black one. You can also consult the back of this, and it shows you which department is she in? Well, she's in R&D, so you wanna move the black car. Now, in order to move these cars, you have to place parts in those little areas that beside where the car is. And the part that he wants to use is based, again, on this little card, so he wants to use a drivetrain. But there's a little bit of a problem with that. There's a couple of rules. The first rule is you can never use a part twice. So they have to be all unique for each different for each car. Well, that's fine because none of them have been used yet. But the second rule is that if any of the parts have been upgraded and we look over here to show which parts have been upgraded and here's the black car, the battery has been upgraded. I, in fact, I did that. So when you have upgraded parts, you have to use those first before you can use a different part. So in order to move that black car, you'd have to use a battery first. And then once there's a battery there, then you could use anything else. So he can't use this to move the black car. Since he can't do that, he's going to move the next car down. He's just gonna go in order until he's able to use this part to move a car. So we're gonna go to the blue car. You can see here, nothing's been upgraded in the blue car, so he's able to use this. You put it in that spot, you can see there's three spots there for parts, and now you're gonna add a blue car and push everything forward. And what Lacerda wants to do is he wants to move those middle cars. He wants to move them out of that middlemost spot, because there's three spots where you can sort of move cars. Lacerda is gonna make sure that everything gets shoved into the middle. And so it's gonna look a little something like this. And look at this, I have already forgotten. <laughs> the first thing that Lacerda does is he gets a little bit of training. I caught myself that time. <laughs> that is the easiest thing to forget. Okay, there we go. So that is, that was his turn. That's what he does there. Now we have Tertsi down here in administration. He trains. And now, in administration, all you do is he trains in the department where Sandra is. Sandra's in R&D, so he gets an extra training there. Very simple action, and he's done. Okay, we've reached the end of the day. Slide that card up. You can see there's, again, there's nothing at the bottom of that card, so we don't have to worry about the recycling department. And now we go back to the top, and we're first. We get to move first. Again, we have to move out of that department. And we have another interesting decision here. You can see we're completely out of parts. We have no parts right now. We have one design. So without any parts, we really can't go to the assembly department and move any cars. We need parts to do that. The problem is, Sandra is going to go there, and she's going to judge us harshly, and we're going to lose a lot of points. So we could, if we wanted, move into that spot just to train, just so we won't lose all those points. The problem is, if we did that, look what happens. Sandra can't fit in there, so she would move here. And she would just judge us harshly here as well. 
So one way or the other, we're going to get judged harshly and lose points. And that's why I'm just going to go get parts and not worry about it. Now, we also could go get designs if there was some really juicy design in there that we really wanted. That would be a good idea. I'm not seeing anything there that's really exciting me. So I'm just going to go to the logistics department. And I don't care about being first there necessarily. I think, I don't think I'm too worried about that. So now Sandra's going to move into the next department if she can. And now let's see where Lacerda's going. Bottom card. Okay. So he also wants to go to logistics. But I'm in his way. He only wants to go to that bottom workstation. He's not going to go to the top one. So because I'm there, he's going to just move on to the next department. And he's going to go there. And lastly, Tertsi. Bottom. Okay, similar problem. He's already in the administration department. He can't stay there. So again, he's just going to move on to the next one. So he's going to hop up to the top. And he's going to go right there. So there we go. That's the order for the next day. Okay, so this gets a little weird, right? Because we're now not able to follow the card because they're in a different department. But their actions in the departments never change. They always do the same thing. The card is just sort of reminding you what it is that they do. And you have this cheat sheet here too that lets you, that sort of reminds you. But you pick up, you kind of know how it works after a while. Now, the first thing that Tertsi does though is he trains. And he just moved from that gray area to the white area. That means he just got certified in that department. Which means we take his little certification marker down here and move it to the next certification area. And again, he always wants that third most spot. But now that he is certified in a department and the rest of us aren't, he is now going to be first player. And that can come into effect in different areas of the game, especially during the meetings. And now he's done this action before. Take the top design and upgrade it. So this is for the white car. Let's see here. There's the white one, or the gray, I guess. It's gonna cover up the points first, if they, if he can. Moved into the two spot, so he gets two points, which means we lose two points. Once again, he would take a car if, if there was one on the test track, but there's not. This is where Sandra gets mad at us. She was happy with us in the previous department, but now she's come over to assembly. We're in the furthest back. Now, if David Turtsy were an actual player, we were playing in a multiplayer game, Sandra would evaluate both of us, because we're both there in the last spot. But Sandra doesn't evaluate our colleagues. They, <laughs> she only cares about us. So there we go. We're, we're furthest back on that training track. So she's going to say, hey, do you have three cars in your garage? That's what she cares about here in the uh, assembly department. Do you have three or more cars in your garage? Well, we have no cars in our garage, so no. We've definitely failed her test. She gets super angry at us and we're gonna lose a point. And then we're gonna lose more points for every bank shift that we have less than five. One, two, three, four, we lose four additional points. She was very, very angry at us. She's then gonna do her action in that department, which is just to clear out all the parts that have been used to move cars. In this case, it's just that one. And there we go, she's done. Okay, our turn. We get three shifts in the logistics department. We also have a bank shift if we want to use it. Now, the first thing that we want to do is use one of our Kanban cards to fill up some of these warehouses. Now, you can only do this once. And we have two cards here that are remarkably similar. So we need to decide what parts that, you know, what kind of parts do we want here? To determine that, we can look at our designs to see, you know, we might want to get an engine so that we can upgrade this design. We might want to look here at some of the designs we might get in the future. You know, we have a bunch of black car designs. We might want to get that one there. So maybe we want to get a pink. But we also want to look at our previous designs here because we're going to want to move those green cars. And in order to move the green cars, we have to use the upgraded parts. 
yeah, engines, very important, and maybe even the autopilot system. I say, let's go with this guy here. We're gonna use this card. We're gonna orient it like this. And then we're gonna fill it in the way I described before, which means basically I was able to fill in everything but that pink, because that's the only one that didn't match up. Now, when you take that action, it shows it right here. You actually get a bank shift for doing that. And again, the times one there says you can only do that once per turn. When you use it, you put it at the bottom of the deck and then you get a replacement because you always have two of those in your hand. And there we go. That was just one shift. We now have two more shifts that we can spend and we can use those shifts to train, which is something that we want to do because look, Sandra's coming, but her evaluation is going to be, do you have three or more parts? And if we collect a bunch, we'll have that. We still want to go up this training track and we have this book. So I say, let's spin this book. That doesn't cost a shift. Ooh, we could spend two shifts to get certified. When you're first to certify, you, you get two points. Oh, and in fact, that reminds me. There you go, I made a mistake already. When Tertsi certified, he was the first to certify in that department, so he gets two points for that, which means we lose two points. Now take these engines. So I've spent two shifts. My third shift, train. And then I'm going to spend my banked shift, my fourth shift, train again. And I'm the first to certify in this department, so I get two points. And I get to unlock this right here. So now I can hold more parts in the future. One more part. Also by certifying in this department, I now have a different action that I can take here in the future, which is I can actually get one of those parts vouchers. Again, you can only do it once. So we didn't get a lot of parts there, but at least we were the first to certify, so we got those points. That's a four-point swing. Okay, we're done. Again, we can't do more. Even if we could, we couldn't do any more because we did four actions, and then we collect this bank shift. All right. And now Vital is here. He's going to train. Essentially, he wants to take two designs... And the column that he's going to take is dependent on where Sandra is. Again, we can flip over here. Sandra's in assembly. So it's going to be this first column that he takes from. We have two different types of designs here. We have this design that has that part on it. Anytime they collect a design like that, it just goes to the bottom of their stack. But when they get a generic design that doesn't, it's not for a specific part, it's just sort of a design, overall design for the car itself. They don't put it at the bottom of their stack. Instead, they put it at the bottom of the central stack and they get two points, which means we lose two points. Okay, there we go. Then we refill. And they're done. Okay, Tertsi's first. Bottom card. Oh no, okay. We're about to see the worker placement dance in full effect. Wants to go to assembly, but Sandra's there. So it's gonna come here. Sandra wakes up, wants to move to this department. It's all full, so she has to go to design. She actually skips of evaluating the logistics department where I just <laughs> trained which is a shame, and that also speeds up the game a little bit. It means that this week is gonna go a little faster because the week ends when she gets to administration. And the extra problem is that I wanted to go to the design department, but now I'm waking up and I can't get in there. So what do I do? I have a couple of parts. I could push a, a couple of cars. Maybe going to the assembly is a good idea. I could also come here to administration that would let me take actions in the design department if I really wanted to. It would also let me, if I come to administration, I could also try to maybe just up my training a little bit. Wow. Now I think maybe I'll push some cars. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what we're gonna do. And let's see, bottom. Okay, he can't stay in this department, so he's gonna come over here to admin. 
Oh, I just noticed that I forgot when I certified here, I get to move up the certification track. I could take three points, but I think I want this book, honestly. Ah, that parts voucher would be handy as well. Ooh, no, I'm gonna take the book. Now I get to go. I have three shifts. I want to move some cars and I want to get some green cars out. And you can see here with the green car, you have to use either, because there's two upgraded parts there, you have to use either an engine or a uh, autopilot. I have the engine. And I pushed a car out and I pushed it out through that middle row so I get two points. And it drives all the way along there onto the test track. Vroom! Okay. Now I want to move some cars again, but I only have this engine. I'd like to put it there, but I can't because you can't have two of the same part. So I'm going to put it in the blue row. You can see here the blue car has nothing upgraded, so I can use any part I want. And there we go. I've pushed another car out again in the middle, so I get two more points. If you look here, because I pushed a blue car out, I get one of these speech tokens. So you exchange your the generic speech token for one of your own color. And there we go. These speech tokens are used during the meetings to tell Sandra all the wonderful things you've been doing. That was two actions. I'm now out of parts, so I can't do any more there. So it's going to be just training for the third. I'm going to use my book for a free train. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my bank shift to certify. I was the first to certify in this department, so that's two points. Get to unlock this portion of the board, so I now have an extra spot for cars in my garage. And I get to move up the certification track. This spot here gives you a bank shift and a speech token. Bank shift, speech token. Okay, so now we're at three speech tokens, which is pretty good. That was my turn. Okay, David Tertzi, train. Tertzi doesn't do the Kanban card. He just takes some parts. He's going to take the electronics. Just keeps one of them, and he's done. That's it. That's all he does there. Okay, Sandra, she's going she's gonna to be mad at me. We're furthest back on the track. She wants us to have three or more designs. Not upgraded designs, but designs. In our, on our player board, we only have one. So she judges us harshly, and once again, we're in the same position. Four plus one, we're going to lose five points. Sandra is unhappy with us. And then her action here is to just remove these four designs. You shuffle those up, you put them at the bottom of the central stack. And then refill. And we have Vital, Lacerda, he trains. And then again, he's going to train in whatever department Sandra's in, which is design. Crosses the threshold there first to be certified in design, so I lose two points. And he moves up the certification track. He always wants to take this top spot right there. So we're still in the lead here, which would be nice. It'd be nice to be in the lead when a meeting happens. But again, we're we're ways away still. Okay, end of the day. Again, nothing there, so we don't have to worry about the recycling. Okay, when that card comes up, it starts at the bottom of the deck. That's the shuffle card. So we're going to add that back to the stack. We're going to shuffle up the cards and create a new deck. For these littler cards, you just wait till the deck runs out and then you will form a new deck. Okay, that's the end of another day. And look at us. We're at the top there. We get to pick where we want to go first. And I said I wanted to go to the design department. Right now, we don't have designs except for this one. And we have no parts also. So we could go either places. Oh, but we can't. Because of another rule that I haven't mentioned yet, we are not allowed to go into a department where Sandra is. 
Sandra can move into our department. The colleagues don't care. They can move into Sandra's department. That's a restriction usually reserved just for the two-player game. But in the solo game, even though we're playing sort of like simulating a three-player game, you still operate with that restriction. So we can't move here. Oh, that really messes us up, doesn't it? Now there's cars on the test track and we want that green car. The problem is we can't get it because in order to take cars off of the track, you need to discard a matching design. So we would need a green design here. And so that's why I wanted to come to the design department was to get that. Now there's only one green design and it's way over there. We don't even have access to it right now because it's on one of the stacks. We could have gotten some blue designs in order to take a blue car, but right now we're a little stymied. I don't know that it makes sense to go to administration just to get one shift. We could just go get parts. Yeah, we could just go get parts. Well, our plans backfired. Okay, let's see where Tertsy's going. Can't stay in the same department. Can't go here, because she's there gonna hop in there. Now when Sandra goes into the administration department, she always goes to her own little desk. So she's always able to move in there. Top card. R-N-D. Oh, there we go. Okay, first thing, train. Still not certified there. Gonna get that. That's the green car, electronics. Okay, so his priority is going to be the, uh, the bank shift over the book. So that's two points. Oh, and then he's going to take a car, and he's going to take the car that's closest to the pace car, which is going to be that green car that we wanted, and just holds on to it. So that's unfortunate. That, that kind of sucks. Now, anybody, anytime anyone takes a car, the pace car moves forward one space. Once the pace car reaches that other slashed uh, yellow line there, we're going to have a meeting. So this is what's timing when we're going to have a meeting. Okay, our turn. What part do we want? We want to move the green car. So now electronics might work. We want pink. Maybe we want to get some pink. Pink and green, maybe. We're going to put that like that. That's going to do a green and a red. Pink. And two. Second shift, I want to get all of those batteries. And third shift, let's get... Ooh. Actually, I'm going to get those dry... Yeah, I'm going to get the autopilot. We're not going to spend our bank shift, but we're going to collect this one. And we are done. Okay. This is easy. Going to train. Then train again in Sandra's location, which is also administration. Boom. Certified. First to be certified in this department, so two points. Oh boy, things are getting bad. And that's the second one. Wanted to go where we were, so is going to go to this one spot behind. So we're still ahead on this track. Interesting. All right, done. And now Sandra's going to bring the pain here because she's going to, I'm furthest back, she's going to evaluate me. She wants me to have three certifications or more, and I have two. So I'm failing. I'm going to lose a point and two, three, four. So four points total. Now we're not looking so hot. And now her action that she does in the administration department is to do an end of week scoring. End of week scoring, first we move this up to show that we've had an end of a week. And it's sort of detailed here, the end of the week scoring, but you're basically scoring for cars in your garage. Now we don't have cars in our garage right now, so we're not gonna get any scoring here. But the way it would work is for each car in your garage, you'd get a point for each upgraded part for that car. So if we had a green car, we'd get three points for the green car, and then you get an additional point for each one that you've upgraded. So since we've upgraded two parts to the green car, we get two additional points. So we would get five points for any green cars that we had in our garage. We didn't make that happen, so we're not getting anything. Now our 
colleagues, they score slightly differently. At the end of the week, the colleagues score two points for each upgraded design tile that they have. And then they just discard those from the game. So right now they have two, three upgraded design tiles. So that's going to be six points. And there we go. We're at two points. If we had been at zero points at the end of that, we would have lost. We would have been fired on the spot. But luckily, we barely managed to score enough to get out of that. And we get to, uh, we get to live on for another week.